Backpack stratagems are one of the only ways you can give your character a passive improvement such as being able to rocket jump, carry lots of extra ammo with you, or even have an outright bubble that shields you from a lot of extra damage. However, things can get a little bit more complicated when deciding which backpack stratagem you should bring along for the ride or if you should even bring any at all. In today's video we're going to go over all of the different backpack stratagems Helldivers 2 currently has to offer and talking about their performance for both the automaton faction as well as determined and we'll be talking about their weaknesses and strengths as well as when to best utilize these stratagems or when to avoid them altogether. Currently as of the date of this recording Helldivers 2 has only a few different backpack stratagems, 6 to be exact and so without any further ado let's go ahead and break these down. So let's start off with one of the least talked about backpack stratagems that being the ballistic shield. The ballistic shield is rather questionable. For the Terminid, there's not even a conversation here. The shield doesn't really assist you from blocking melee attacks, apparently it reduces melee damage by a little bit, but it really it's not noticeable at all. To equip this stratagem when going up against the Terminid is to pretty much waste the stratagem slot. Not to mention, the shield gets dropped when you get ragdolled, so any hits from a big unit such as the chargers or any explosions and the shield goes on flying. Now the only use this shield may have is when going up against the automaton faction. I mean, the shield itself does state that it's meant to offer some protection to small arms fire and that's pretty much all it'll really do. It'll protect you from small arms fire, from devastators, little bots, as well as striders. But I'll admit, it does a pretty poor job at that unless you're planning on crouching the entire time trying to cover your feet. But even then, expect to get shot from time to time on the side of your body, not to mention of course the berserkers or that is the chainsaw wielding units will hit you just fine and as soon as you get back up on your feet you'll start getting shots on the legs once again. Now of course it's also not going to protect you from explosions when coming from the side or back so overall it's a very situational stratagem. I could see this being used by someone who enjoys using weapons that can be one handed such as SMGs but that's pretty much it. Oh and I almost forgot. When you have the shield equipped in your back, even without you actively using it, any shots to your back may be blocked by your shield, so I guess I could see maybe speedrunners or people who are rushing objectives to maybe use this shield for some extra passive protection. But then again, even for that, we have way better choices in this list. For me, there is not a situation I would recommend using this over the other shields, but with a proper SMG primary, this stratagem does become far more powerful than it would be if you utilized, let's say, a shotgun for example. But for a defensive stratagem, I still would not select this over the generator shield. Moving on, let's take a look at the guard dog. The guard dog is a little flying bot that will follow you shooting at anything that poses a threat to your character. And the damage this little guy does is actually quite strong. When going up against the Terminid, he's capable of dealing with multiple small bugs and strong enough to take down quite a few medium sized bugs as well. The problem with this guard dog is even though it packs quite a punch, this version of the guard dog has a very small ammo count. Meaning, he'll take a few shots at a group of bugs, manage to kill off a few, but then have to come back to reload and this happens all the time. The magazine count on it is just really low and when dealing with hive guards, the guard dog's not smart enough to conserve its ammo and instead it'll just blow shots at it for no reason. Essentially wasting ammo on an armored unit that takes no damage from it. So sadly, unless we're dealing with small bugs such as scavengers, stalkers or medium sized bugs like the warriors, that the guard dog doesn't have much use. But to be fair, that's what the guard dogs are supposed to do. It's meant to assist you from dealing with swarms by being able to kill a few little guys, which adds up to quite a few kills in the long run. This version of the guard dog is quite a powerful choice for both solo and grouped player at the lower difficulties, as you don't encounter that many armored units. For higher difficulties, however, you'll find the guard dog wastes most of its shots shooting at armored targets, which exist much more frequently at this higher tier. Moving over to the automatons, the guard dog actually shows a little bit of promise 
The guard dog actually tries to shoot the weak spots on these bots that are their little red glowing face, making it so that it'll take down some berserkers and even devastator without me even having to fire a single shot. But once again, the ammo count is fairly disappointing and it constantly needs to reload and eventually runs completely out of ammo and only regenerates its ammo once you completely resupply. So sadly, the downtime for this bot is far too high for me to truly recommend this for either solo or grouped players. But once again, it will be very useful in lower difficulties, especially for solo players, having a little extra help in hand dealing with the enemy units. On the other hand, we've got the Guard Dog Rover, which is essentially the laser version of the Guard Dog. The Rover's version has got a way more forgiving ammo count, being able to engage enemies for a much longer period of time as the laser is a heat based weapon rather than a regular ammo weapon. It's worth noting that since it's a heating based weapon, you want to take that into consideration when going into very hot planets, which will drain its ammo dramatically faster. Or on the other hand, ice based planets, which will empower this stratagem by quite a lot, making the ammo count last much longer. For terminated faction planets, I find this little sucker to be quite a helping hand. Its DPS is lower than the regular guard dog, but it's nearly constant firing enables it to get rid of a lot of little bugs creeping up to you and I find it especially great at dealing with hunters which tend to try to strafe to the sides to catch you off guard. The rover version will suffer from the same issue as the non rover version as it will attempt to kill armor targets by shooting directly at their armor essentially just wasting its ammo but it does a little bit better job at that as its ammo count being larger will usually means that as it fires at hive guards, it will force these hive guards to go into its defensive mode, making them fairly harmless against you as your rover constantly forces them to defend themselves. I find it to be really good for terminate play, and once again, the lower difficulty, the more useful this will be, as it thrives more for dealing with non-armored units. For the automaton faction, you'll quickly notice the difference between the DPS from the regular guard dog to the rover version. The regular version takes takes down bots much faster. But once again, where the rover lacks in raw damage, it thrives in ammo count. The rover, just like the regular version, will oftentimes attempt to shoot the bots in its weak spots, being able to bring down even some medium sized units, which should not go unnoticed. For the automaton faction, I think I may prefer the regular version, as its power is often a better choice for dealing with these generally tougher units when comparing with the terminate. The rover is fantastic at keeping the small guys at bay, but I find it to not be as impactful over the course of a full game when dealing with the automatons. The nice thing about the rover though is you truly don't need to care about its ammo count as it'll take care of itself without you having to constantly resupply it. So maybe as a solo player the rover will be a better version whereas for groups when ammo is more abundant using the regular guard dog may be a better fit for automaton planets. And speaking on ammo let's talk about the supply pack stratagem. The supply pack may be single-handedly the most important support stratagem the game has to offer, especially when in large groups of Helldivers. But that's not to say it's a bad stratagem to use in solo play either. Matter of fact, it's actually extremely good. The Supply Pact will enable you to resupply your support weapons without having to waste resupply stratagems, just like you're seeing there in the background. I have constant access to supplies, pretty much making my grenade launcher have more ammo than I even really need, freeing me up to having to resupply throughout most of the game. I'm not really going to split the supply pack for both factions as its use is bound to resupplying your character not really a faction based stratagem that will offer different values to each. What's going to be the biggest question you ask yourself when equipping the supply pack is what are you bringing along for the ride and will it benefit from the supply pack or will it be a waste? For example, if you're bringing the recoil less rifle along with the supply pack, then unless you're using one of those stratagems for your teammates to equip it, then you've essentially wasted a stratagem as you won't be able to equip both the recoil less rifle and its ammo backpack as well as the supply pack. It's either one or the other. But when in solo play, pay attention to whether you're bringing along for the ride stratagems that will already utilize backpacks, such as the spear, recoilless rifle, and the auto cannon. These will not allow you to equip yourself with a supply pack. As for group play, there should always be at least one member on the team equipped with a supply pack to make sure the team doesn't need to worry about resupplying as much as they would without the pack. This backpack stratagem is indeed very powerful. Moving on from the supply pack, let's take a look at the controversial jump pack. The reason I call this controversial is that I feel it's the backpack stratagem that will be S tier in some players eyes, but for others, it's 
it's a completely useless stratagem. So let's talk a little bit about it. First for the Terminate faction, I feel that's where the jump pack will truly shine. It's extra useful against Terminate, as with the jump pack, you're able to outrun pretty much all of the bugs, including the Bio Titan, allowing yourself to gain some distance between you and your enemy, which can be used both offensively and defensively. The jump pack's also fantastic for those just wanting to rush through the objectives without concerning themselves too much with engaging in lots of combat, allowing players to constantly outrun their enemy. The issue with the jump pack is that it's obviously mostly just for that, for gaining distance between the player and the enemy, which especially in group play, it'll add little value for the team. I find the jump pack to be dead in the middle between being an offensive stratagem and a defensive stratagem, as you can essentially utilize it for either goal. So the value you'll add to the team by using the stratagem will be entirely up to you. If you're just running to places and dodging bugs, you won't be giving your team much to work with. Best you can offer will be trying to speed through objectives. But if you're actually using the pack to keep yourself alive longer, while you assist your team lay down fire and keep those bugs at bay, then it'll have similar value to what the shields will have to offer. For the automatons, the jump pack offers a little bit less value, as the automatons can still land their shots on you mid-air. And oftentimes, the pack won't really save you from explosions, and at its worst, can even make you ragdoll even harder. Once again, it'll all come down to the player's mechanical skill. The jump pack can be extremely useful to assist players get behind striders, tanks, and hulks, and being able to lay down gunfire in their heat sink a lot easier. I feel the jump pack is not a stratagem that will have the same value for different players and instead will be more valuable in the hands of a mechanically skilled player as the player can utilize the pack to outmaneuver different types of enemies offering a lot of value for their team. So the pack won't be a universally good choice for different skilled players, it's really just the type of stratagem that you'll have to test many many times and see how you feel about using it. What is an universally good backpack stratagem however is the shield generator pack. This pack will offer immense value regardless of the player's skill and play style, as it'll nearly double the player's health with how strong the shield is, and most importantly, stop the player from being staggered, slowed, or oftentimes even knocked down, as the shield will protect you from all of those. And that's where I feel the shield truly shines. The resistance to stagger is indispensable, especially when you're playing the game solo, as all enemy units' attentions are entirely on you. If this shield offered only damage protection, but not resistance to slows, this shield would be knocked down several notches, making it far less useful. For terminate games when playing solo, this is pretty much an ST tier pack stratagem because the constant slowing and poisons from every little bug that's able to slightly lick you will have you edging an aneurysm. So it's better to play it safe and block all of those annoying little staggers from the constant hunters and just equip these when going solo. For automaton games, the shield is also very powerful, although I do believe it to be a little less powerful than it is for the bugs. Mostly because the automatons will be constantly rocketing you and be tossing you around like a ragdoll and that's where the problem comes in. The shield applies to the entire little yellow circle that surrounds you, meaning your hitbox is also heavily enlarged due to the shield surrounding you. Meaning even if rockets miss you by quite a bit, but still hit the shield, guess what? you're eating up that rocket. So it may be a little bit more questionable when playing against automatons. Personally, I'm still trying to figure out whether I prefer it for automaton solo or if I prefer another backpack option. So this will definitely need to be tested from player to player and seeing what you like and seeing if that increase in hitbox will be an issue for you or not. It still thrives at protecting you from gunfire, flames from the scorchers and others, but I feel it may make rocket units even more of a nuisance than they already are. So we'll wrap it up here about the backpack stratagems. Thank you all Helldivers for watching. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.